Hello, Data Pipeliners. This is Data Engineer One. Welcome back to another episode on Riding Data Pipelines with Kedro. In today's episode, we're going to be covering something super duper important, and that is testing your Kedro data. So this is the third installment of our introduction into testing. We've already covered testing your notes, testing your pipelines, and now in today's episode, we're going to be covering how you can test your data. So what is data testing? Well, truth is, that pipelines have most of their problems coming from the quality of the data, right? This is basically the reason why you create all of your Kedro pipelines is to ensure your data quality. But the things that happen to a pipeline um, are usually like from these external sources, right? So we have a lot of data that comes from places that we might not necessarily have control over. Um, as the data comes through our pipeline, it can cause issues um, or in, in, in interesting behavior that is unexpected, right? Um, and so as a result, um, what what you'll see is data that'll come in from the pipeline into the pipeline from one source may have like a very big fundamental change with the way that the schema is or the way that the, the data distribution is. And as a result, the outside of that pipeline or like the end product of that pipeline is kind of messy, is muddled and actually doesn't really serve our purposes. Uh, this is actually a very, very common case with data pipelines. In fact, it's pretty much the biggest problem with data pipelines. And so having the ability to test your data, to assert the quality of your data is a crucial part of any pipeline and is a crucial part to make sure that your pipeline is scalable. Because I can guarantee that when you have maybe like 100 nodes from 200 different tables, something's going to happen in one of those tables. I guarantee it. There's going to be some kind of change, some kind of crazy copying or weird schema change that you don't predict, and it's going to ripple and cause great effects throughout your entire pipeline. Truth be told, a schema change is actually like the most obvious change, right? Because you're going to be relying on these different columns. And as soon as the column disappears, then your pipeline is broken. But what if you have something like missing data? So I wouldn't necessarily, I wouldn't trust that uh, any kind of pipeline would be set up to say, hey, this column has all nulls, for example. Sure, maybe it can handle some nulls, but it doesn't handle all nulls. So these are some of the problems that we want to face today with data testing. And so the best tool for the job actually um, is not necessarily Kedro. So the best tool for the job, in my opinion, is a library called Great Expectations. And so Great Expectations came out uh, about in 2018, I think, um, or at least it officially was widely released in 2018. And it's an excellent, excellent library that, that offers a lot of great, uh, what they call expectations for your data. And so you can see right here, but listed below, I have, I'm sorry, not below, but right, right over here, I have a, um, a collection um, of these kinds of tests that they come with. And so this is actually on their, their website. This is greatexpectations.io. Uh, and here they have like a whole list of all sorts of cool kinds of tests that you can do with your data. Uh, you can do like, okay, expect that the column exists. These are pretty simple. This is your table shape. Uh, they can also assert for like values, your missing values or your unique values and types, um, as well as ranges, string matching, date time, JSON parsing, aggregate functions, multi-column expectations, distribution, uh, and then these uh, file data assets. And so it's super duper cool, right? I mean, there's like a lot of great programming that has been, that has been put into great expectations. And I'm gonna show you guys today how we can combine some of the tooling from great expectations with Kedro. Now, and I also want to note that the way that we're going to be doing this is actually in a very simple way. So uh, I'm, I'm, I'm very much about being very practical with uh, the way that you create pipelines. And so all the instructions that I give to you guys are, are very flexible. So you guys can pick and choose how you want to do your things. Uh, you can just take my advice um, and tweak it and mold it uh, in any way that you see fit. Uh, and so today, the, the way that we're going to be implementing great expectations is not necessarily um, like the, the 
quote unquote like documented way or you know kind of mm, some kind of like fancy way but really what we're going to be doing is a very simple approach and we'll and uh of course we'll we'll show you the approach when we get to it uh, but here's an example of what um great expectations can do and so here we have an example this comes directly from their from their example um on their documentation and you can see you start out with like a, a data frame and then you just literally type in what do you expect and in this case we expect the column values to be within a particular set and so it says okay i want to expect that the column values inside of the column p class should be within the value range of first second and then third um, as a result, you can actually have, there's, an, there's one more property of these expectations that I think is super cool. Um, and it says, and it's this one right here, mostly. So you have this mostly option, which says, hey, um, I expect the data to look like this, but if maybe 1% doesn't look like it, then that's fine. And you can see here at the very top, uh, we have a, a success attribute right here. Uh, and it says false. But then when we put in the mostly.99, it changes that success to true and therefore ignores that one column uh, where you have one value that is that star. And we're actually going to go through a quick example here um, in the next part. So I have here a Kedro Jupyter notebook. I have the catalog available as well as the context that's already built in. Um, and this was started, of course, by using Kedro Jupyter notebook. Uh, and then I just created a new notebook with the um, with our context and catalog built in. Um, there's other instructions. If you guys want to start up your notebook, you can take a look at one of the other videos where I say how you can use Jupyter Notebook with Kedro. Um, but here, what I'm doing is I'm loading our catalog entry. And obviously, we're using our, our, our beloved example iris data. And then what I'm doing here is in order to get it into this great expectation form, I import great expectations. So you can see the import happening right here on the, on the second line. I'm just going to delete that and pull this down. I've got the import great expectation is GE. And then I do great expectations from pandas. And so I can transform this data frame, which I know to be a pandas data frame. Here you can describe this really quickly. This is just our sepal length width, petal length, petal width, um, and as well as the uh, type, the species. I can take this data frame. Uh, from pandas and turn it into a greater expectations data frame, so GDF right here. And so once we've done that, we now have the ability to access all of those cool expectations. So I can just type in expect, expect, and hit tab, and then we'll see a list of all of the different kinds of expectations we can get. And so we have, you know, expect the column to be have a standard deviation in between. There's so many cool things. The one that we're going to be doing, we're going to be using today, is just this expect value columns. This column values to be in the set. And so the column that I want to use is I'm going to use, I think, the species column. So let's take a look, and we're going to take the species column. We just want to expect that the species is within a set of species. Um, that we are, are familiar with. So we have Setosa, we have Virginica, and then, you know what, let's go ahead and run this really quick just to see what it looks like. If we hit run, we get the output, and we can see that our expectation was a failure, success, false. And why was it a failure? Because we have our partial unexpected list that includes this one that we haven't accounted for, which is Versicolor. So this is one of the values that we have not listed in the set of our expectations. So let's go ahead and add Versicolor to our expectations here. And then we'll rerun this guy and voila, we have success is equal to true. Now, very quickly, what I wanna do is I wanna just go ahead and add in an extra value here. So I wanna show you guys what it looks like when we when we uh, have an incorrect value. So I'm going to switch over really quick to my pie charm. Uh, and here we're going to go and open up our data. So our data is located here in Iris. We have Satosa. And let's go ahead and just add really quick um, another value. And this value, instead of uh, Satosa as a species, we're going to have it as DE1 as a new species. So we're going to create DE1 as a species. We're going to save this guy. And so now we've modified the Iris data set. Going back into Python Notebook right here, what we're going to see is when we reload 
our iris data set, we're just going to reload it using the catalog. Um, and then if we see, if we if we open up the iris data set, you'll see that we have the new species here, DE1, right inside of this row. So what do you think is going to happen when we run an expectation? Our expectation is that the species um, is going to only contain values within this set. And the set is Setosa, Virginica, and Versicolor. And so that means if we run this, bum, 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 we're going to actually not get a different result because we didn't turn it into a greater expectations data frame. Let's go ahead and run that line really quickly. And then we run this again, and we see that we got a false. And here is our unexpected list, uh, unexpected data, which is the DE1. So we can do two things. Either we can add this into here as DE1, or we can use the mostly option. And I'm going to just go ahead and do this for now. Um, but of course, really, the, the mostly option is in the case where you have a lot of variance. Um, in our case, since DE1 is something that is you know very straightforward, it's the only thing that varies, we could just add it into our list. But let's go ahead and see this mostly um, expectation just to give you guys a sense of what happens. And when we add this mostly, we see that the success is true. So the expectation passed. So here, what we're going to do is we're, we'll just go ahead and keep our iris data set like this. And what we were going to do, very simply, is we're going to actually have to add a new set of nodes. And so these nodes are going to be our quality checking nodes. Let's go ahead and create a new module here. Um, this is going to be our quality. And then inside of our quality module, we're going to have um, our nodes. And then this first node is going to be related to the iris data set. So let's go ahead and just make one that says iris data set. Right. Um, there's a lot of ways that you can have your naming convention here. Uh, I think um, keeping it related to the original source data set um, is, is, is a useful way to do it. Um, that's arguable, of course, and it really depends on the culture of your pipeline and, and the other people that you're using it with. Um, but let's go ahead and just rename that to be I example iris data to match the catalog entry. Now, the node in question that we're going to get is going to be uh, check iris um, iris data. It's a very simple node. The input, of course, is going to be a pandas data frame. Um, Let's go ahead and import that data frame type from pandas. Um, so there's a few ways that you can go about this, right? Um, first, of course, we're going to be transforming our data frame input into a greater expectations version. So let's go ahead and import great expectations. I keep saying greater expectations. What I mean is great expectations. Uh, so we're going to have from pandas df right here. And we're going to add all those expectations that we had before. So it says, um, GDF expect, this is the result here. Now, so here's where we, here's where it really depends on how you wish to handle your pipeline. Uh, it depends on the scale of your pipeline and how long your pipeline runs and where you're putting this checking node. Uh, that's because, um, depending on where it is, you might either want to ignore this check or stop the pipeline immediately if this check fails. Uh, in this case, because the pipeline is small, let's go ahead and stop the pipeline immediately when the check fails. Um, so truthfully, truth be told, our return type here is actually unnecessary. So we can just go ahead and clear that out. Um, and then we're going to call this um, if the result um, success right, is not true. So if the result is not successful. We're just going ahead, going to go ahead and raise the exception that says iris data is no good, like this. Iris data is indicted, iris data is no good. And then what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and add this to the pipeline. And actually, uh, I, I think it, it's a little bit better rather than returning the result in this case. We actually just want to return the data frame. And that way, we can make it easier to rely on that pipe. Um, and so if we go ahead and add that to the pipeline here, we can use that for our data engineering pipeline. And so we, we're not using the data engineering pipeline right now, but let's go ahead and use it. So if we add data engineering pipeline, and we'll do two things. 
the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to rename this example iris data. So we're going to say um, unchecked example iris data. That's going to be the first part. We're going to rename that to be unchecked example iris data. That's because the data engineering pipeline currently relies on example iris data as its input. So let's go ahead and say unchecked example iris data. Then what we're going to do is we're going to also add a new pipeline here. And this new pipeline is going to include our brand new example iris data checked function. We have our check iris data. We're going to import that from our checks. And then the inputs here are going to be that, that unchecked example iris data. And then the output is going to be example iris data. And so there you go. What we have here is basically us in um, doing a, 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 a double injection, right? Where we're creating a new data set where we're taking away this example, the original example iris data value, and then putting in a new example iris data value um, that is the output of our check. And the reason why we wanna do that is to ensure that the check happens before the rest of the pipeline. And so by doing so, we can make sure that the pipeline will run and do that check. Now, before we go ahead and run this pipeline, I'm going to do one more thing. Inside of the check iris data, I'm actually going to remove this mostly. And what we'll see is that the pipeline is going to throw an error. It's going to throw an error, and that error is going to be iris data is no good. And that's because we have our DE1 data that is inside of there. Um, so we can say that. And so let's go ahead and run one of the terminal and give this guy a go. Kedro run. And it should use the default pipeline. And so as soon as it starts, it's going to encounter that first node. And when it encounters that first node, which is our checking node, it's going to throw an error. And once it throws the error, then we will have the proper, um, proper output. And it looks like I actually made a mistake here. And that's because the pipeline object is not callable. The pipeline object is not callable. It's because I, I made a very silly mistake here and I added, I don't know why I added those extra, that, that call there. Um, this data engineering in pipeline is actually just an object. And for some reason I added the uh, extra, uh, the extra um, <laughs> parentheses there. Uh, so let's go ahead and rerun this guy. Uh, we should encounter no issues then. And here you are object is not subscriptable. And so actually, <laughs> that's, that's because the, the actual output from greater expectations is not a dictionary. It's a, an expectation validation result. And so rather than doing a result.success, what you can do instead, um, we should be able to just call it as dot .success. So let's go ahead and give that another try. And if that doesn't work, then um, I'll double check the documentation here. And there it goes. Uh, iris data is no good. Uh, so in summation, uh, by by checking the result of great expectations using the dot uh, operator rather than assuming that it was a Python dictionary, that was my mistake. I was only reading it from the uh, Jupyter notebook. But result dot success um, is the actual uh, output of the greater expectations, and then based on that result dot success, we can raise that exception. And the reason why you want to raise an exception is because you want to check to make sure that the values coming into your pipeline are good immediately, like from the get-go. You want to make sure that that's correct. Um, otherwise, you run the risk of having a pipeline that has this bad data. Of course, you can make a lot of different arguments for where you would want to put this checking function, how you would want to call this checking function, um, et cetera, et cetera. And this is really up to you guys and it depends on how your pipelines look. And so that's the real, uh, that's the real question there is that it's not an easy rule of thumb, but it requires assessment um, and prioritization of your pipelines, your data, as well as your computation resources. Okay, so if you guys enjoyed this content, make sure you button that like, sub that scribe, and ring that ding if you want to know when we are pipelining. And the code for these for these uh, past three videos should be up on GitHub. I'll leave a link in the description, and you should be able to see the code uh, amongst all three videos. And thanks a lot for watching. I'll catch you guys next time. Bye-bye. Take care.